Okay, good morning. I'm Victor Jaques, and I'm going to talk to you about the Streamer V API. Thanks for coming here to be here so early after the party last night. So let's start. We'll come to talk about just your V API, a quick uh, exp explanation about what is V API, what's new, and what's next in this just your V API project. Um, what is V API? It's just an API specification, and also it's a library implementation. All this is in GitHub in the Open Office uh, Technical Officer for the Office. Uh, you can make pull requests and open issues and start off there. So this slide is to show off my abilities in, in Inkscape, as you can see. Uh, basically, just to explain that the LVA is a library that links to your client or to your driver. For the client side, it exposes an API in bh.h, and in the driver side, it exposes a header file uh, VA backend. So basically, your, your library uses this library to, to, to your client code, connect to the library to, to make operations to the driver. Basically, uh, the operation are stateless, so you pass frame by slice by slice or frame by frame, and you have to add all the context information to that slice in order to be decoded or encoded, post-processing, whatever. And the driver connects to the kernel, to the window in system, or whatever it needs to do the processing. Uh, there are several backends. Uh, there is the Intel one, which has more features and support many platforms of Intel platforms. Also, is in GitHub, so you can also see the code and do pull requests and open issues. Uh, also, there, there there is the Mesa drivers, which are also quite complete, more particularly for MD graphics driver. It's quite good. For uh, Novo, there's also support, but it's, as far as I know, pretty bad. And there are other backends, but these other backends are unknown for me. I don't use it, so perhaps the support is not that well. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the VA info output for a Kaby Lake laptop, which is mine. And you can see the, it depends on the hardware and the driver, how many. Uh, profiles and entry port supports. In this case, there are MPEG-2, H.264 with different profiles, VC1, JPEG, BP8, H.265, H.265, BP9, and there are also many entry points. For example, for decoding, there are the VLD, the ENC slice are for encoding, and the video prosproc is for for, uh, is for video processing, like scaling, changing color formats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's go into the what we are here. This is just streamer V API. This is basically a wrapper for LibVA uh, to interact through a G streamer pipeline with the encoding, post-processing, and decoding facilities that LibVA offers. Um, so this is a report of this year, more or less, what we have done since the last uh, G streamer conferences. And basically, we have pushed 411 commits. Uh, along this year, we have deal with uh, more or less 119 bucks in Boxilla. We have had 20 contributors. Uh, we have managed, thanks to slow mo to, to Sebastian, 13 releases along this year, uh, plus the next table and plus the current master, which is going to be the next, next, next master, the next, 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 uh, well, the 1.14. Uh, and special thanks for all the contributors. These are the names. Thank you. Uh, so what's new? What we can be working? Well, uh, for historical reasons, Gstreamer B API was uh, split in a Gstreamer uh, elements and a core library. Uh, but this core library was using um, a particular and specialized object subsystem. And we have, uh, because of the integration of GStreamer API into the into the GStreamer project, we have had to com uh, convert step by step the objects handled in that core library into just the object of G objects. Now we have the main object, which is GStreamer GStreamer API display, which is already complete. It's just transformation into just the object, and there are many others. The the cause of this uh, objectification is 
of course, well, man, the main reason is to use the leak tracer for the world, thanks to Guillaume. Um, and also we registered the properties at class initialization that was not done that before. It was using a link at least, very strange. Now we're completed. Now, the second thing is direct uploading and rendering. Uh, normally when you upload a surface or an image into a surface, or downloaded a surface into an image, if you want to export or import an image, you usually use the BA get image, BA put image. But that is very expensive in terms of computations because it can do color transformations uh, and untiling and tiling uh, surfaces. So basically, moving is moving the, the, the the, uh, an image from the system memory to the GPU memory or wherever the driver do stores information. So there is another uh, function call that is called BA derived image, which is supposed to be cheaper in terms of computation to unload and upload an, an image. That's why we call direct rendering and upload. But the, there are some problems in MISA driver, so that's why we only do direct uh, rendering only if this environment variable is set. In the case of the float, it's supposed to be always enabled, but still MISA drivers are complaining that there are some use cases that is broken. So we'll see. Uh, also, we have improved the demo handling either for upstream and downstream. Uh, thanks also for Nicola for all the work. And, and, and Julian is source. It's also helping a lot in that area. And, also, we negotiate the memory the above caps feature. This caps feature is only the case if the if the demo booth is not mappable to the system memory. So that's why we uh, added this caps feature. Uh, we have changed the way we initialize the display, the BA display. Uh, now, the first thing we try is to ask GSTGL if just if GSTGL is linked. Uh, in the in the element, uh, what is the system? The the X11 Wayland uh, GLX EGL environment we are setting up. If if just the GL gives us an, an information about that, we create the, the correspondent BA display. Otherwise, we fall back to the normal uh, try try and try and error list we have there. Also, we have fixed the initialization for headless systems. So now. It doesn't fail anymore. Um, we also improve also the GST Buffy display sharing among the pipeline. Uh, so now, you, if an element asks for a BA display, if there is no BA display, try to create it using this mechanism, explained it before, and then share it among all the, pi the, all the pipeline. Uh, also, we added a, a mean so the users creating an application can create its own BA display and pass it to the pipeline through, through this also mechanism of the GST context. Um, because of all that, we were able to, do, to remove the BA display cache that we were handling before. Uh, so nowadays, we can have multiple BA, BA syncs with different BA displays, which is something we requested but someone I don't remember. We also had support for MISO. For also, we compile either LVA2 and LVA1. This means uh, BAPI version number one or before. And we also fix all the detected uh, issues for the static analysis, code static analysis. Also, we normally passes all the GST validate tests. Sometimes not, some, but normally it passes which is good. Um, we have redirected the LVA meshes to the console into the GSTMR logs, so we don't pollute the console anymore. Uh, um, we also, in the, in, the, in the decoders, we have a faster upstream renegotiation, thanks to John over there. <laughs> and we also add a low latency mode for H.264 decoding. This is mostly for streaming. Normally, uh, cameras stream uh, wrong H.264 streams, and they, uh, the, the, the DPP buffer getting increased because it's required by the specification, but they don't want that. So we added this low latency mode in order to push as, as fast as we can the DPP in order to, to use those strange cameras. 
And also, we had a student, a very good student in the summer, in Google Summer of Code, Orestes, that work. Uh, for example, you have a driver that doesn't support uh, multi-video MVC streams or SVC frames in H.264. So basically, it detects it and drop it. So you basically continue watching this stream if they doesn't see the other views or the other type of S SVC frames. Uh, but also, uh, a base property, base only property was added in the decoder, so you can drop it. For example, this may, might be useful for for transformations or re-encoding uh, using only the base uh, annex or the base spec. In the case of uh, Bepi the code bin, we have uh, the Bepi post proc is plugged dynamically, so we can control if we want to use it or not with this environment variable. Yes, I know there are too many environment variables, and that's not a good thing, but still, this uh, an easy way to, to handle. Uh, in the case of the encoders, we now query the possible upload formats for the encoders, so we don't rely anymore in in the case of uh, to use uh, Bappy Post Prox, so now we exhibit in the in the caps what are the formats that the that the encoder can handle. So there's no need to plug the the Bappy Post Prox before the encoder, and also we merge the GST tags from upstream and pass it to downstream, and also we support upstream reconfiguration. If the stream uh, changes, you can reconfigure and send the event and all those things. Uh, there has been a lot of work in encoders. Also, we can uh, set the profile of the H.264 and H.265 using the CAPS negotiation before we have to handle all the properties in order to get the exact profile. Now, if the user set a profile, then the, all these parameters are set to use that profile. Um, also, uh, we handle this region of interest in H.264. This is something that Intel added in their uh, driver. And basically, you can set a rectangle in the frame. So you want to add more information in that. You're going to spend more processing time in that in order to get more uh, resolution in that area, more or less. Uh, and so we send a message into the pipeline, setting what is the rectangle we, can, we, we have to add more interested and add it as a, a, as a region of interest. We also support the main 10 profile in access 5. Uh, we added the constant bitrate mode in BP8 and BP9. We added the variable bitrate mode in H265. And we added a new parameter in the encoders that are the quality level. So, so in order to, to, to it's, a, it's a number, a magic number to tell what if we want to add more quality in the encoding. We want to spend more processing time encoding or less processing time and in order to achieve some type of, of um, quick or low latency uh, Encoding. Uh, also, we added the uh, AU delimiter in H.264 that is used for streaming and required by Apple devices. Uh, we added this H.264 macro block bitrate control. We handle. We add the multi references for H.264 and H.265, so we can have B frames or P frames in a in different. Make it, it's a new algorithm for that. Uh, also, we added in X264 and X265 the quantum parameter setting for either for I, P, and B frames. In the case of the sync, in order to pass the all, all the just to validate test, we added a color transformation inside the sync because in the past we they, they only can handle a couple of color 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 formats, but we do not know because there is no the LVA and API to query how which are the color format that it handle. So we had to add this BPP if if the first frame is fails to be displayed. And also we rework more of the Wayland display only for Western. In motors it breaks miserably because motor doesn't support some color uh, format that. Uh, the, the, the VAPI sync used to, to display, so it, it should crash. Well, not as a crash, send an error. But in Western, it works. We have to add this color transformation as a shader in Matter. Uh, we also had added these strange things, which is the flexible encoding infrastructure, something that Suri has been working on. Ask him if you have a question about it. Um, basically, it's an extension to the API. Uh, that is splits the, the encoding process so clients or users can add their own intellectual property for certain algorithms. So just 
that's the case. With this, the, the encoding uh, uh, process is split in two parts, encoding and pack, and pack. And between that, the, the client can add their own algorithms, like for example, the motion vector algorithms or transforming entropy coding, whatever. So, uh, so we were thinking how to how to do, how to do that in this streamer. So there are several ideas like having just a, 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 an element as a reference, so the other clients can use that reference to implement their own uh, uh, elements, or create a base class that have an API that can be plugged by by, by the user with subclasses creating elements. Or oh, why not? We're still thinking that about. We have now. Uh, a reference implementation that is in, already in master, uh, but still is highly experimental, unstable. It works only in Skylake, and it only works for H.264. Uh, what's next? What's for, what's for the next year? Uh, there is in the LVA pipeline uh, several stuff like uh, again keep working on the flexible encoding in infrastructure. Also, they are adding more API for handling them above. We have to add this. We have to and it's in order to fix it also. Um, there is also new thing called uh, multi sync multi frame processing. Basically, you have one encoder. You, if we can figure out that or think about this in in GStreamer, it's like we have a, an encoder. With multiple request paths, multiple uh, for 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 the for the for the source side and on demand source path. so you can add a stream for encoding, for example, X264, and add another path to the encode BP9, another path to encode many. So we can use uh, we have a better use of all the hardware that is available in Intel architectures. So nowadays we are not using all the the, 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 the chip that are available there. In that way, you, we can it's possible to, to to use all the all the hardware there. Also, they are adding encoding statistics, so we can add a metas or something to, in order to uh, get that data from the encoder. And there is a ton of pending tasks in Boxilla for just to remove the API. You are very welcome to add more or to reduce the number. <laughs> well, it's good. And questions. We have three minutes for questions. Everything is clear, I guess. Woohoo! <laughs> well, okay. Thank you.